I've looked up to Tony Stewart my whole life and, and I've seen what he's done and, and I've tried to now get to the point where I can elevate all of that. So it's just gonna take time. It's gonna take time to prove to people that we're four races in. Welcome back to the High Limit Room. This is episode two of the 2024 race season. Dylan Welch, Kyle Larson, Brad Sweet back with you. Uh, recapping first couple of weekends of racing with the High Limit Sprint Car Series and uh, previewing what's to come. It's uh, getting ready to be a busy stretch as uh, as the winter kind of thaws out and we, we hopefully get some racing here coming up um, in the next few months. So, uh, we do have some some races to toast to that Brad and Kyle have won since uh, I think our last show. So uh, Brad won at Volusia in February uh, with the other series. Kyle won the Cup race in Vegas uh, a couple weeks ago, or uh, yeah, last week I guess. So cheers to you guys and uh, congrats on getting the year started off strong. Um, Kyle, for for you, you know, everybody was talking about Owen at Vegas and Victory Lane getting on the car and whatnot and messing with the car. Um, I thought like people complain about everything, don't they? Like it's like they're going to really send it. You guys are going to send a how old is he? Eight years old, nine years old. Yeah. Nine year old kid out there to cheat your car up. Come on. <laughs> yeah, no, no I, I saw all those. I was going to say, I saw all those comments like as I was leaving, leaving the track and I screenshotted the tweet and we have a you know, group me app with the with the five team and I sent it out to the, all of them. They're all laughing. So, um, <laughs> no, fans are fans are hilarious. And, um, you always think Hendrick Motorsports is cheating. So, um, yeah, oh, and <laughs> I parked on the banking with it in gear. So it was like kind of trying to roll down the banking and the whole interview. He's like, Dad, Dad, the car's rolling. The car's rolling. Dad, the car's rolling. So, yeah, when he, I saw the picture of him holding the spoiler, um, I thought that was that was funny. But uh, no, he he enjoyed in, he enjoyed running out there and kind of stealing the show. And I was laughing, you know, him kind of getting the crowd going. Like I didn't I didn't know that he was going to do that. So, um, and then all of last week, you know, too, he was on like Race Hub and they were showing him. So he he thought he was pretty famous. <laughs> it's cool. I mean, for both you guys too. I mean, you guys have your kids when you do the, the wing stands and stuff too. I mean, it's cool to get the kids out. I'm sure they, I'm sure those are memories that, that stick with them for a while. Right, Brad? I mean, your daughter probably, she, I would imagine she's probably enjoyed that a time or two. Yeah. She's, she went up on top of Kyle once and then she, ever since then she was like, when, you know, when am I going to win and be able to go with you? So, uh, finally was able to, to take her up top at, uh, at Volusia. So that was cool. So she's, uh, She's definitely, as they get older, it's, it's just more and more exciting to, to have them around and, and create those memories. So, yeah, really cool to watch Kyle and see Owen and then Audrey get out there and, and uh, you know, see those those memories created. So, yeah, we're we're enjoying it for sure. Cool. Let's talk Florida. Um, the first couple races of the season uh, won by Kyle and, and Tyler Courtney at East Bay. Um Brad, what what did you think about your your weekend and and um and and what do you think kind of of the competition level with with the high limit guys? Like it's a different group of guys, right? Than than what you're used to running, maybe with the outlaws. So what's uh, what's the adjustment been like for you? Yeah, I mean it's definitely a, t a tough group of cars. Um, it's you know you, I feel like they're all drive they drive really hard, probably a little more aggressive. Um, you know, feels like when you're, when I've been with the outlaws, it's, you know, I think the points are just always a, been a bigger deal. And, you know, I think there's maybe just this, you know, not, not wanting to wreck or, or however that works, but it seems like uh, these guys are a little more aggressive, but I would say if my car just wasn't right where I needed it to be, um, never got it quite right at, at East Bay, um, which I really haven't run a lot of races at East Bay and those guys, you know, had some laps there. So, it wasn't surprising to me that that we're battling up towards the front, but but they're a tough group of guys, and it's fun because um, it's a young, ambitious group. You know, you have a uh, uh, Kyle who always makes races interesting. Uh, Sunshine's been extremely fast to start the season, and then uh, whenever you see Corey Day getting up there or Rico, you just uh, Justin Peck's been you know sneaky fast every night. Brent Marks, I mean, it's just a tough group of cars, and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, Obviously, we would have liked to have done better with our Napa Auto Parts car, but uh, didn't get any wins yet. Uh, we've kind of been all over the the map uh, with our setups and stuff, trying to get a little bit better. But 
uh, definitely some some different tracks and, and unique and and uh, it's been fun racing for sure so far. Yeah, all the guys we talked about and kind of previewed that we thought would be good certainly uh, you know certainly delivered and and then uh, a couple of weeks later I was on to Golden Isles in Georgia. Tyler Courtney again continued his strong run there and Jacob Allen won. Uh, and what was just, I thought, a really good race from top to bottom. Um, you know, Kyle, you've, you've run there obviously before in the late model, but I think about everybody else had, had never really run there before. So what did you think of it as a sprint car track and, and kind of the show that you guys were able to put on there? Yeah, it was, uh, it was difficult, um, for, for myself and, and Brad too. I mean, we were both pretty average, but, you know, looking at it, like I thought it was going to feel really fast you know, have a lot of grip. And then once we got out there, I never felt grip. Like I always felt like I was spinning all the way around the track. It's really round. So it's kind of like you get momentum going and, um, yeah, just, uh, there was a, there was a few guys that their cars were really good and, and they could, you know, qualify. Well, I think I started while well, I was on the outside front row the first night of the heat. And then I think I started third, the second night. So, um, didn't get the jump on the, the first, uh, first night of the heat race. So, you know, kind of started wherever I started mid pack and, and finished there both nights. So was, uh, disappointing, um, to not be there or go there and be competitive, but regardless, it's always fun to race the sprint car. And, and I was happy to see a, a good race up front because, um, where I was at, it was, it was hard to see. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I think I only maybe passed like one car each night. So, I was surprised when, when I, you know, heard every, all the late model guys, you know, when I was, we were standing there cause we ran the late model race next, you know, they were all talking how good of a race it was. So, um, I was anxious to get home and, and get to see the highlights on flow. And, um, Jacob did a great job. Um, sunshine was really good. I think it was Peck was up there as well. Um, so yeah, they, they put on a, a good show and, you know, gave, gave the, gave the fans, you know, something you know good to watch. So, yeah, that's a definitely a late model crowd that part of the country. So um, it was good to have sprint cars kind of showcase what they could do. You know, go, go green to checkered. Um, also was was important, I think, to to showcase what sprint cars are all about. Everybody loves a Jacob Allen win. Yeah. Um, what? So you guys both can chime in on this. Like when you and Brad, I don't know how long it's been. Probably not that long since you've like maybe gone to a racetrack that you've never raced at before, but. What's like the most important thing for you guys when you get to a place you've never raced at and like you get eyes on it for the first time? Like what what's that process like of kind of studying the track and 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 kind of gauging just maybe how the night's gonna go when you, you go to a place like that you've never raced at? Or then there's been there's never been sprint car races at for, you know, another thing. Yeah, I mean you you typically try to, you know, watch video, but there's really not a lot of video of sprint cars at Golden Isle. So it was definitely um just getting there, looking at the track, but we had a practice night to kind of go out there and at least feel it. I thought the track, looking at it, just looked like, you know, it'd feel pretty standard, but uh, it never really did. It Like, to Kyle's point, it seemed like uh, it, it raced really uh, unique and round and didn't have a lot of grip, and it took a while to get my car to feel, you know, better through the weekend. I, I finally, on the final night, felt like I was somewhat competitive, but not not right, but it's kind of refreshing in a way to go to new tracks and kind of level the playing field. It seems like, um, you know, a guy like Jake Allen and, and, you know, there's guys that figure it out and you can see their cars, you know, come to life. And, uh, I think it's neat. I mean, I've been kind of doing the same tracks, the same schedule for so long that, uh, even though it wasn't perfect for me, I still enjoyed uh, going through the process of a new place uh, seeing new fans and, and kind of racing on a different feeling surface and a different track. And it's a beautiful facility. Um, you know, we, we didn't have the greatest crowd Thursday, but, uh, Saturday was a great crowd. And, um, you know, like Kyle said, I thought we put on a really good show. So uh, a lot of fans were, were excited after the races talking to them. So that was good. Lots of new tracks too coming up, uh, later in the year. And, and we'll talk about those here in just a little bit. Um, all right, let's, let's, uh, let's, I guess, stir the pot here or, or give you guys a chance to, uh, give your rebuttal to some comments that, uh, Donnie shots made the 10 time outlaw champion made, um, just a, a little while ago, some few days ago. Um, I guess maybe explain 
what he said and and then what you guys think about this and and you can you know the floor is yours to kind of uh defend what you want to defend here i guess i don't think it's defending anything um you know i've always had a lot of respect for donnie i think uh, as a racer for sure like we've raced each other you know close for a long time and built kind of a respect level um obviously with his comments he was you know not very supportive of of what we're trying to accomplish with high limit and so be it he's been 27 years uh with one brand and obviously he feels very uh attached and associated to that brand and i never would have expected him to to want to come over and run with high limit but um you know i kind of feel like some of his comments are don't make a lot of sense um you know more nights in a hotel with less nights of racing you know doesn't make sense so i thought you know, it'd be nice to hear the context behind where he came up with those numbers. Um, you know, I think what we're trying to accomplish, um, you know, Kyle and I, I think he, when he said some things like basically I'm just using Kyle's name and likeness and, um, you know, I think Kyle's a lot more part of this than what people realize and, you know, has a, a big passion for sprint car racing and we're doing it together. Um, you know, maybe I'm in a little bit more on the forefront, but, um, yeah, I just feel like, you know, the Outlaws have a safety team. They double their tow money. Uh, he's racing for bigger purses. And, uh, you know, that's some of what we're trying to accomplish is already happening uh, with raising the bar and creating some competition. And, uh, you know, he said we're, we're doing the same thing on the other side of the street. But, uh, you know, I guess, you know, instead of getting in a war of words, I think what we'll do is just, you know, go out there and, and prove him wrong. And, um yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Um, but, you know, I don't know what, what Kyle has to say, but, uh, yeah, definitely didn't enjoy Johnny, Donnie's comments at all. No, I mean, I, I echo what, what Brad says um, a lot. And, and two, I think, again, like neither of us would do this if we didn't have the best interest of the sport of dirt track racing, but sprint car racing, you know, especially in mind. So, um, yeah, this is, this is obviously a huge risk on our parts and, you know, what we mean to the community. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, we, we definitely have the sport in mind and, and I feel like yeah, there's a lot of fans that see that there's a lot of people in the industry that see that. And that's why there's a lot of people that have you know, supported us, um, from the beginning and, and why we have so many teams, you know, traveling with us and, and because they trust us and trust our vision. So um, and yeah, you know, I am a big part uh, of, of high limit and, um, you know, more so behind the scenes because I am so busy with everything else that I have going on, but, you know, I stay heavily involved in the, you know, text chains and, um, calls and doing this and racing and, and all of it, you know, I don't, I don't have to do anything, any of this, you know, I don't have to, you know, race a sprint car. I don't have to be a part of a series, but you know, I, I realize the impact that I have on dirt racing and that's why I, you know, try to, you know, give back as much as I can. You know, I've looked up to Tony Stewart my whole life and, and I've seen what he's done and, and I've tried to, you know, now get to the point where I can elevate all of that. So, you know, I, I enjoy doing it. Um, it's risky for sure, but, uh, you know, I love it. And, and I want this sport to be better than it was you know, 10 years ago, be better than it is today. And, um, that's what we're striving for. So it's just going to take time. It's going to take time to prove to people, um, you know, and, and how we can show them, you know, our vision and, and, you know, where we've you know, planned and prepared for, but, uh, you know, we're four races in <laughs> to, to what we've got going on. So, um, it just, it's going to take time and, and I understand that. And I hope, you know, everybody else can give us that time and have that patience to, you know, do what we want to do and you know, make that positive impact, which we already have. Yeah, it's a long game. It's it's like you said, it's it's year two of the series and and four races into the first national you know national race. So there's going to be uh, an adjustment for everybody. What do you what do you guys think? Like, give people that are watching this maybe a peek like behind the curtain of like the, the industry and like people who are really in the sport and like what the, the vibe or the feeling is inside, you know, inside the sport compared to like 
the outsider, just the fan perspective that that maybe don't understand all the inner workings of of how much this really is changing the sport. Like, are there people on? Is it more more one way or the other that there's people that are fans that are are excited about it as opposed to people in the industry that are kind of uh, you know on guard about it? Or how do you guys feel about that? I definitely think anytime you're changing status quo and you know maybe what we're doing could be deemed you know a little controversial inside of the sport, but I'd say most of the fans, the casual fans, I mean, providing, you know, more entertainment and, you know, maybe a different mindset and some extra excitement and, you know, allowing fans to, to see Kyle and, uh, you know, maybe going to some markets that they weren't, you know, uh, gone to and, and, you know, race teams are racing for more money. Uh, more teams are running a national schedule than ever before. So I would say like to my, from my perspective, the majority is excited, but Obviously, there's people um, that have been, you know, doing really well with the way status quo has been that don't love it. And, you know, um, God bless America. It's uh, as much as, you know, freedom of speech allowed Donnie to, to show his opinion. Uh, capitalism is what this country is built upon. And, um, you know, we're entrepreneurs now. We're, we're building a business and uh, we're challenging status quo. And, uh, you know, we have a, a long term vision. Uh, believe it or not, we're looking five and 10 years out uh, of where we can take the sport. We know it's going to take a long time, but uh, two young, ambitious racers uh, building a race series that's, uh, you know, hopefully going to be more exciting for fans and, and have the fans in mind, but also uh, more professional for the racers and the race teams and the team owners. So, uh, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. For sure. Going to be a lot of fun and a lot of as we said, landscape of the sports changing a lot, and it is going to continue to change here as uh, as we get further on into the year and, and into the future. Looking ahead to um, the springtime, and, and we're about a month out from the next uh, next batch of races. We start with uh, one that I'm really excited about. It's the first race in the mid midweek money series, but headed to the ditch, uh, Riverside International Speedway in West Memphis, Arkansas, um, a place that. I think a lot of people have been have been craving some you know some good 410 national racing app for a while and um, always just puts on a great show. What do you guys like about that place and and you know give us the elevator pitch for people that have never been there or maybe you know never are not familiar with the uh, the lore of what makes this place so cool? Well, I don't know if Brad's been there. Brad's probably I'm guessing ran some USAC stuff maybe there in the past or ASCS or something, but. I've never been, so I, I've wanted to race at this track for, gosh, a long, long time. Um, so I'm, I'm happy, you know, we were able to uh, get this race on our schedule. I've seen so many good, you know, highlights from from Riverside and, and Ricky's, you know, one of my best friends, Stenhouse, and, and that was his home track. And just hearing stories from him and his dad and, you know, they both grew up racing there. So, um, you know, lot lots of... Uh, cool stuff that i've seen there you know ricky doing his little pirouette thing uh, well, he flipped yeah. over he flipped it's i think the, we got video of it. i call i called that race it was the cra craziest thing my my yeah. uh my best one though and there's probably videos somewhere but uh i remember a long time ago sammy swindell and ricky sammy was in like the tom Rawl <laughs> 10 car maybe and uh they like collided off of four I think Sammy might have gotten into Ricky's left front. I could be wrong. And it knocked the front end out. And I remember Ricky was this like just been signed, you know, I think to NASCAR with with Roush. And Sammy, I think, ultimately went on to win and probably could I mean, I guess it's both of their home tracks in a way. But I remember on the front stretch, like it was getting rowdy and there was a fight going on in the and then Big, comes, big Rick. <laughs> yeah, big, big Rick was out there fighting. <laughs> Here comes Ricky running to the infield, like getting in the middle of it. That was a funny one. And um, I remember Sammy got, he got kind of, he got hurt pretty good there. I think somebody, you know, dirtied him up pretty bad in, in the scuffle. But uh, thankfully he was okay. But uh, yeah, that there's uh, that that neck of the woods, they're, they're a different breed there. So I'm excited <laughs> to go get in front of all them, them fans. Yeah, I, I've actually raced there. Um, it's a, a California-esque track, a uh, short quarter mile, uh, got a little character to it. Uh, I ran an outlaw race there in 2018. That's the only time I've ever raced there. 
uh, we got rained out the second time, but I finished second to Darren Pittman and I was fun. It's, it's great race. And even the heat races were exciting that night. So looking forward to getting there and uh, putting on a show, I think, you know, obviously hoping for a big crowd and a rowdy crowd. And uh, is Ricky racing? Do we know if Ricky's racing yet? I think he is. Yeah. I think uh, him and big Rick, big Rick's got the engine tuned up and they're ready to go racing. So uh, that'll probably be his first sprint car race. Well, I guess he ran Belusia. So first 410 race of the year. So he's, he's, he's excited to get there. Have exciting. you guys have you guys been down there lately? When I was there, which was 2016, the press box was literally just like a uh, one of those like shipping containers <laughs> that they just bolted to the top of the grandstands. <laughs> I don't know if it's gotten any better or not. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, well, no, not all race checks have the the best infrastructure, but you know, uh, well, that it's got the, a it's got a good surface. That's the important that's, thing. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Some of the some of the best are the diamonds in the rough that uh, that put on the good racing. So uh, we're mm-hmm. excited to go there and uh, get that midweek money series started. Yep, and that's uh, that's Tuesday, April the 9th, So about a, a month, a little less than a month out from uh, us recording today. Month out from today or from tomorrow, I should say, uh, is a triple header in uh, the Texas area. So you go from the ditch to. Uh, Texarkana Speedway on that Friday, uh, April the 12th. And then the dirt track at Texas on Saturday, April 13th in conjunction with with NASCAR weekend, which of course is where the High Limit Sprint Car Series will end their season uh, in the fall. And then it's a, um, a triple header cap at RPM Speedway on Sunday the 14th. So uh, a lot of cool stuff coming up. And, um, and then we kind of stay in that area. You've got the uh, the red dirt weekend, which comes up, uh, that following Tuesday or the, uh, the second midweek money race. So there's a lot of excitement and a lot of cool tracks coming up And that red dirt race, um, is kind of in a, a window of, of a Shane Stewart bonus that, that Shane has put together here, $5,000 for whoever scores, uh, the most points in the three events that start, uh, at red dirt. And then also continues on to, uh, to Lakeside as well. So, um, some cool stuff there and that's presented by Wilkinson crane rental Wilkerson crane rental should get that in there too. So, um, there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. Red dirt too is, is another racetrack that we've seen a lot of really, really cool shows be put on there through the years. There was a, um, a killer all-star race there in 2020, uh, with Aaron Reitzel. So, um, the when you look at this schedule guys, after we get through the ditch, what do you, what do you like? What jumps out at you? um as as something to watch and something to to kind of get excited about as race fans um i mean for me those are three four like four in a row tracks i've never been to like i think there's april like we're talking like five or six of the tracks i've never been to so i'm just kind of excited texarkana uh texas motor speedway obviously i've seen video and just really hoping that can be a great show uh i know we'll have a lot of crossover fans so excited to see uh, if we can put on a good show that night and then uh, Sunday's RPM. So I don't know a lot about the that track, but uh, obviously cool that we're able to race so much in that little bit, that that area. Um, and then Red Dirt, I saw the race with Kyle and, and uh, Rutzel. So that was a really cool race. Um, it looked like it was really slow on the bottom and kind of had to drive hard on the top and really wide and kind of flat. So uh, you never know until you get there what it's like, but obviously excited that to get going. I think once we get going, we get we get going pretty good. So, um, you know, obviously we, with our Napa car, we want to get off to a good start in April and and hopefully uh, get back on track and uh, hopefully start winning some races. Kyle, that red dirt race with you and you and Wrights were battling. It looked like you were going about half a mile an hour on the bottom, trying to just <laughs> make the thing not be in the slick. I, I that was that blew my mind how slow you guys had to go down there to just make it work down there. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was an awesome, awesome race. Like, even though I got beat that night, I was like, damn, that was, that was some fun. So, um, yeah, I just remember it being, it's really flat, really, really flat, really roundish. I think the backstretch wall kind of comes up quick from what I remember. And then it opens up, you know, into three, but it's so flat and that colored dirt, you know, it, it built a massive curb, um, especially in three and four. I can't remember one and two. I think one and two is maybe closer to being easier to like 
get off the edge. But uh, and then yeah, around the bottom, like tiptoe right around the tires. Um, I remember not really having much grip. I don't think my car was great that night, but regardless, it was like it was fun. It was it was a blast. So I hope the surface can be somewhat similar to that. Um, I think it typically is whenever I've seen like a USAC race there and stuff. So yeah, I'm excited to get there. Um, as Brad mentioned, you know, a lot of new tracks for me, even you know, that week with Riverside, Texarkana, Texas, I don't think I can go to RPM cause the cup race, uh, probably won't be done in time. Um, but then yeah, getting back to red dirt and then, uh, what is it? Lakeside or something next week. So good little stretch of races. Um, be kind of cool too. If like fans, you know, I think fans could get to the RPM race. You know, it, it looked like it's not too far from Texas motor speedway. So maybe, you know, some of them are driving home. They can pop in to catch the second half of the night uh, on their way home. So yeah, got a little time off here these next couple of weeks, but then yeah, it gets going hot and heavy. I'm just looking here to see what, how far RPM speedway is from Texas. So I can tell, uh, tell up, everybody. Yeah. I think it's I think it was like a little over I think it was like an hour twenty. Hour so. and four minutes. It's basically oh, just wow. on just on the other side, but it's just on the other side of Dallas. So it's like a straight, you know, as straight a shot across uh Dallas on the interstate as you can go. Um that's uh at eight forty PM without traffic. So uh you might might be able to make it over there, but uh, an hour is not too far. So hopefully um hopefully some people can do the double there and and check that out as a nightcap Sunday night. Brad, I mean, Kyle obviously has got, you know, got the cup stuff going on, but what are you doing for the next month as, as you guys kind of get ready for, uh, for the real, you know, the real season to kind of get hot and heavy here? Uh, just a lot of planning with high limit, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, we're, we're really thinking about these events that we have coming up and, uh, learning from the first four, you know, the events that we had and, um, yeah, so working on that. And then Silver Dollar, I was racing this weekend, uh, Mini Gold Cup. So going up there to, to work uh, the racetrack and work the equipment and try to – we've had a lot of rain, so trying to get the pits ironed out and stuff like that. But, yeah, just, just kind of wait until we get to go racing, but but kind of working behind the scenes with the, the High Limit team. We've got a lot of great people um, on our team, and we're uh, really ambitious, and everybody's uh, excited about – you know, getting back to work. I think everybody, uh, it was nice to have the soft opening, um, you know, and it's nice to have a little bit of a break, but, uh, yeah, we're excited to make some, some fun announcements and, and, uh, get back racing soon. We'll be here before we know it and ready to get going again. Uh, April 9th, midweek money series race number one at Riverside, uh, the ditch in West Memphis, Arkansas. And then, uh, next three after that, right back to back in, in Texas and Arkansas at Texarkana, Texas Motor Speedway and RPM starting on Friday, April the 12th. Um, guys, appreciate it as always. Good catching up with everybody. And uh, I guess we got another month until we get to go racing. So I'm sure we'll get to do another one of these before too long to preview that. But um, good luck to everybody and what uh, what racing you do get to do, Kyle and um, and Brad, take care of everything out, out West and we'll see you guys soon. Yeah, thanks. Yep. Thank you.